Honourable Minister, thank you so much for finding the time to meet with FBN Capital. And we have a few questions for you in your capacity as Finance Minister. But first of all, perhaps you could just outline briefly the, your fiscal strategy. Well, um, thank you very much. We have come into office just over it well about 18 months now. But our, our, our philosophy around the Nigerian economy is to move it from a consumption-driven economy to an investment-driven economy. And, and for years, we have been just an extractive economy. We pump the oil and we basically export it crude and import everything that we need. Now, with the fall in the oil price, that's exposed the, f the vulnerabilities of that strategy. And we need to now reposition the Nigerian economy to become investment-driven. Check, taking, changing the, the spend, the spend pattern from what we inherited, which was just 10% capital and 90% recurrent, to 30-70 uh, as a first step, but then around that wanting to crowd in private investment in infrastructure. Infrastructure is critical because if you look at all the problems in the Nigerian economy, it comes back down to infrastructure. That's what stops us from being competitive. That's really what drives inflation because our inflation is imported. Um, that's what's dri driven our import dependency. Uh, and that's what stopped other sectors of the economy becoming productive. So we believe that if we can focus on our infrastructure, it's, it's a big infrastructure deficit, but if we can begin to attack that infrastructure deficit, we can make the economy productive. So that is it in a nutshell. And now to do that, there are a number of fiscal initiatives we have to drive. One, of course, is to increase our revenues. Uh, the other, of course, is to reduce our recurrent expenditure, to create that headroom for... Uh, the capital expenditure that's needed to really drive the economy. And that's really what we're working on. Well, thanks. For that. Actually, the first two questions feed directly into what you just told us. Um, the, the first one on tax revenue to GDP ratio, probably half where it should be. How quickly can the federal government reach an appropriate level? We've set ourselves a target. It's currently 5% of GDP, which, as you've said, is very, very low. It's lower than all our peer group. And it's an obvious area where we can improve. Uh, the FIRS have, have started on a very aggressive policy of drawing more people into the tax net. Um, we have set ourselves a target to increase it from 5% of GDP to 7% of GDP within three years and 10% of GDP within five years. And we think this is attainable. A number of strategies we'll be using, as I've said. We're driving people into the tax net using technology. We've already been able to register over 700,000 companies that had not paid any tax at all in the last one year. Uh, brought them into the tax net. Uh, we're using technology, we're using data to identify companies and persons who are eligible to pay tax and are not doing so. We've recently uh, put together a small tax amnesty to the end of the year where we're waiving penalties and interest to encourage people to come forward. Um, and we're, we're, we're confident that um, those strategies will work. We'll make it more and more difficult for people uh, to do business if they're not tax compliant. Um, for example, here in the Ministry of Finance, it's impossible to get a payment out unless we check your tax status. So it's little data points wherever we're getting data on who's doing business in Nigeria, we're driving them into the tax net. And we think that's a sustainable revenue but we're also bringing people onto our integrated uh, payroll and personnel system, IPIS, which is a biometric payroll system. Uh, so that initiative is also going on. And then we're constantly checking against BVN numbers, looking for duplicates and eliminating people from the payroll. That's an ongoing exercise. We think there's still a long way to go. Uh, we haven't brought on some of the big payrolls, like the military. They're still out. Um, the Navy are still out. The Air Force are still out. And those are the areas, the military and the paramilitary, are typically the, the, the areas of the payroll where we have the most um, error. So we still think that there is significant savings to be made and we don't see ourselves having to um, force redundancy. Force redundancies. Uh, could we have an update, please, Minister, on capital releases within the 2016 budget? All the big spending ministries uh, have had a significant amounts of their capital uh, allocation released to them. And, and we're seeing the impact already with um, contractors moving back to site. I think the first release, uh, we saw a certain hesitation from the contractors. Some of them hadn't been paid for four years. So naturally, um, their sense was, are we sure this is going to be sustained? And the, the tendency was to sit on the money. But with the second release and subsequent releases, we've seen a lot more activity from our contractors moving back to site yeah. as part of our efforts to stimulate the economy. If the price is right and the coverage was right, would it not be a temptation to raise more than a billion dollars from the forthcoming Eurobond issue? Uh, we already have commitments uh, that are at least 500 
million of that one billion. So we have no uh, fears of not hitting the one billion. The question is, as you said, if the price is right, might we as part of a debt a prudent debt management strategy consider taking a bit more? Yes, we, we have that flexibility in our medium term borrowing strategy. And part of our plan, actually, as part of our debt management was to refinance some of our Naira obligations into external uh, to take advantage of cheaper interest rates uh, and to take uh, longer tenures. So we might look at that option. But, it, but yeah. um, at the moment, I'm just focused on doing, doing the one, which is what we're doing. No, no, of course, well. of course. But, they know, but the, the Naira obligations you just mentioned, um, ca can we expect to see the proposed deficit financing from the World Bank and the African Development Bank in place shortly? Well, the AFDB, we, we're, we're further along with them than the uh, World Bank, and that's a deliberate scheduling issue because we, with the Forex adjustment, of course, the 4.5 uh, limit became much less um, yeah, in terms of what we could borrow and take externally. And we already had commitments with China Exim with the um, rail project. So what we've done is uh, pushed part of the World Bank funding into next year's budget and take the ADB this year. We're, we're on track. We, we finished a negotiation with them uh, last this is October, so this month, mm. and we're hopeful that uh, before the end of the year we'll complete um, that transaction. And then, of course, as you know, the Eurobond is uh, the commercial... Is the commercial side. OK. D does the request to the Assembly for $30 billion in external financing for the next three years cover all the likely needs over the period? I think it will. Um, I mean, this is mainly concessional, mm. um, mainly concessional borrowing. Um, and of course we had said from the beginning in terms of our debt strategy we were going to take the cheapest money, the lowest cost money first before we move up the, the food chain so to speak to the euro bonds and the like. So, so we're confident uh, and, and this, this is money that is project tied and of course you recognise it also includes um, sub-national um, borrowing yeah, um, because yeah. the, the external borrowing plan is for the entire country. Could we have an update, uh, please, Minister, on the non-debt financing element of um, covering the deficit for this year? So we're talking about the recoveries principally, and we're talking about asset sale. And, talk, and, make, and talking of asset sales, perhaps some thoughts on the domestic debate on the issue, which has been initiated, although not by the federal government. Well, the recoveries were, were always part of our, our strategy. Uh, we've gone about it uh, in a very systematic manner, but as you know, uh, recoveries are very slow. So, you know, we're, we're still battling with the Swiss on a batch of loop that's mm. been with them for 20 years. We have, you know, uh, there's a long lead time, you have to go through a judicial process, and of course, um, there are usually people who are holding these funds, straw men for want of a better mm. description, who are holding these funds, who will then go to court to try and stop you from getting access to them. We've had a lot more cooperation uh, with the president because of his goodwill from the international, um, from the from our international partners and, and from other countries in terms of remitting these, these funds. Um, and so far we, we've been able to um, secure agreements with the Swiss. Um, we have some money in America which we're chasing. Uh, but all this money, as I say, is, is money that was taken 15 years ago. Mm. The more recent money um, it's taking a, a, a little longer and again tied up in legal process, but we're very confident that we'll get it. We've recovered quite, most of what we've recovered has been recovered locally um, through the EFCC and through the various investigative agencies and quite a few people have surrendered um, assets <coughs> as part of um, the investigative process. So um, I think that, um, of course, when you're looking at a situation as ours, you have to look at all options. Uh, and you have to uh, assess those options carefully. But I don't think any decision has been taken, and I don't think if such a decision were to be taken, they'd be taken in a hurry or on the front pages of newspapers. You've got to um, have a strategy mm -hmm. around these things. Uh, so far, um, my, my, my financing plans are around the, the, what I've announced, increasing our revenues, right. yeah. um, borrowing a little more, and yeah. tightening up, mm -hmm. doing a, 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 some sort of fiscal tightening mm -hmm. to create headroom for... Um, capital investment. So, yeah, so I mean, basically the, the fire sale, whatever you want to call it, right, has come, in, come to discussion long after the drafting of the medium-term framework, yes. so, so it's not included at all. Yeah. No. Well, I, you know, I, as I yeah. say, I think it took on a life of its own, mm. um, and I'm, I'm not sure that it was government-driven. I think government found itself reactive, but I, I'm, I'm not, you know, um, 
I mean, of course, if you if you have a, a fiscal deficit, you've got to look at all your mm. options, and if if there are, you look at the cost benefit analysis, but. If you, you've got to look at the value of assets as well. Mm. What are the type of assets Absolutely. you have left? If you have oil mm. assets and oil prices depressed, then it may not be a good time to sell oil mm. assets. So yeah. uh, I think it's. Um, yeah, it's I, 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 yeah. Can, can you see further debt relief measures uh, ahead, or are they necessary? Really, is the question. Um, our, our approach to state governments has been to put them as well as ourselves mm. on a path of fiscal sustainability. And what we put together was the 21-point fiscal sustainability plan, which was conditional. And that was what we tied the relief to. And that plan really required state governments to tighten up on their recurrent expenditure, mm. introduce efficiency units just as we have, do biometric of their payroll. In other words, to do the necessary fiscal housekeeping to put themselves in better shape. And the other uh, reform was uh, widening the definition of mm. internally generated revenue. Um, because traditionally, when, when states were speaking about internally generated revenue, there were just two sources. It was taxes, it was the Lagos model, it was taxes mm. and land mm. fees. Now, that's fine if you have a private sector, but for most of the 36 states, some, a large majority, there is no private sector. So they have to start to think differently. And we've started to see that, and that's been very exciting. Um, one of the states, Kebi, his IGR is I Grow Rice. He's mm. gone out and he's become the biggest uh, rice dealer in his state. He, he has gotten his, his smallholder farmers growing rice. He's, he's the buyer, he's the bagger, he's the seller. So the, the, it's changed the definition mm. of what revenue is, and I think that's very important. So we've said to the states, and we've interfaced with them, we've, we've built up this, these fiscal sustainability plans that some they sign up to and put targets on and say this is what we're going to do. And that puts them in stronger fiscal health. So we don't see at this stage a need for any further intervention. We've had a, a, a tough month this last month because the three-month lag between action and revenue in terms of the Niger Delta disruptions have just fed into the FAC account. So we did have a tough month last month and probably will have another tough one next month. But we think that most of the states now are on a fiscal sustainability, uh, a fiscally sustainable path. They understand what their costs, recurrent costs are. They understand what their revenue projection is. And they're managing their finances a lot tighter um, as a result. So no, I don't, I don't anticipate. Okay. And uh, finally, Minister, um, passage of the budget. So, I mean, most people say that uh, one of the pillars for the economy to emerge out of recession would be capital spending from the government side. Now, um, perhaps you could uh, give some reassurances that we can expect a more rapid passage of the budget 2017 and a smoother process. Thank you. Yes, the Minister of Budget and Planning is working very hard, and his team are working very hard on ensuring that we get back onto the, the, the right timetable uh, for the budget. They have started that work, they're at a very advanced stage finalising numbers and we're quite confident that we'll get back on, on track um, in terms of um, you know, getting the, the budget on, uh, released and um, approved on time. And of course, as you've said, that, that's an important mm. pillar in our um, programme to really stimulate and reposition this economy. So we're confident that we'll get back on, on track. Last year was a very unusual mm. year. We came in late, we came in towards the end of the year, and there were challenges, but I think a lot of lessons have been learned, and I think uh, this year's process will be a lot smoother. Well, Minister, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.